All right, we're back in the box again. My my partner and I, Elliot Anderson, one of the recruiters. I'm Daryl Skinner with the Chesapeake County Police Department. I have retired back in here recruiting officers for our police department. Uh, as we continue forward about recruiting in Chesterfield, um, bringing officers aboard, what they have to go through to become a police officer. That's what we're going to talk about today, Elliot. That's right. When I came to the department, I was fortunate that Daryl recruited me. Mm -hmm. I was a first-generation uh, police officer. I didn't have a legacy in my family of working in this aspect of law enforcement. Um, so I really didn't know what to expect. Right. Um, I got some guidance from him, and now that we have this podcast, we'd like to get some guidance from you, uh, detectives who actually do the job and meet that background, do the background processes for exactly. our applicants. Exactly. And Mark, if you don't mind, give us a little background of you and how long you've been an officer. Sure. Um, before I came to Chesterfield, I was with uh, the Virginia State Capitol Police for a year and a half. I've been with uh, this department. I'm fortunate enough to be with this department for 26 years. This wow. December will be 26 years. Cool. My time here, I've worked patrol, which I absolutely loved, training, which I loved, and now I'm working in uh, personnel doing background investigations, which I also love. I've been very fortunate. So what we would like to talk about today is I'm an applicant. I'm putting my application in. Give me the process of what I have to go through once I do my online uh, application. Well, once you do the online application, um, you're going to be sent a background packet from us. Okay. Uh, what we ask you to do is to fill that background packet out and then return it to us. It's all done electronically, and um, directions are given through the course of the emails. Um, once we get that packet, we review it, and there are certain things that we look for, um, but it has to be filled out 100% completely. Okay. And we expect that you're honest when you fill out that background packet. Now, how do you use that package? I mean, I mean if I go back to my days of... <laughs> fill it out. We had to actually fill it out by right. application, a, a hard copy, right? And uh, and and, and um, give that in. So once I fill it out, you look for certain things that that person mm -hmm. would not be qualified to mm -hmm. go forward on the package. Is that true? That is correct. Um, and the packet is not handwritten anymore. It's absolutely filled out on the computer. Okay. So it's very okay. easy to do these days as compared to when we all came through and had to handwrite it. Right. So right. it's very easy to do. It's easy to be uh, thorough with it. Okay. Um, but certainly there are things that we look for in the packet to make sure that the person is qualified to be a police officer. With our standards and all. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, on the background packet, it also asks for some documentation that goes along with it, like transcripts and DD-214s from the military, are you expecting those to come back with the packet or they can be mailed in? Mm, and those question. directions, I believe, are on that packet on how to successfully do that as well. Right. Okay, I'm going to slow down a little bit. So once I get the application filled out, you will respond back to me in 10 days or how many days? Yes, once we receive the packet and we review the packet, if it meets our standards, okay, then we go ahead and issue an invite to, okay. uh, for okay. them to come to our okay. police applicant testing. Okay, and that can go to your spam, so we do tell them, because I get the call all the time, man, I, I didn't get a package, I didn't get any, any uh, answer from the police department when I can come in and take the test, so we do tell them now right. that check your spam, make sure it's, 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 it's not in there, and they will give you a, date, a sp specific date to come in and take the test. Right. Good. And, that I, was great. And, and I would urge everybody that if you submit an application, and mm -hmm. you don't hear from us, or if you submit a background packet and you don't hear from us, follow up with us. Yes. Uh, we do find that there are glitches every once in a while, mm -hmm. and it's not that we aren't responding back to you. It's There's just a glitch in the system. Please follow up with us. Okay, so now we I come in and take the test. What goes on from there? You What type, What am I doing? Do I have to, a certain um, grade that I have to get to pass the test? Yes. The uh, written test is a general knowledge test. There's really nothing you can study for it ahead Good. of time. Okay. Um, you must score a 70 on the test to pass. Okay. Okay. Um, then there's the PT test. Um, I think it's a fairly easy test, but okay. you must be in some shape to pass that test. It consists of a vertical jump, an agility run, push-ups, sit-ups, a 300-meter sprint, okay. followed by a mile-and-a-half run. Okay. The important thing to note, too, is that if you fail the uh, PT test one time, you can come back on the next testing date and actually take the test again. But I don't have to take the written test. Once I pass that, I'm good. You are good once you pass the written test. And the same thing with the written test. If you should fail it the first time you take it, okay. you can come back on our next testing date. We don't make you wait six months. We don't make you wait a year. We want you to be successful, so we're asking for you to come back as soon as possible. And one of the things that's unique with our department, unlike a lot of departments, we don't rank our applicants based on their test score. Oh, good. Okay. 70 is our passing score, mm -hmm. so everyone who receives a 70 moves forward. In a lot of departments, 
the higher the score means you may be excluded from mm -hmm. potential employment based on your score. Ours is a 70 and you move forward. Okay. Um, so we don't give preference points. Um, so we respect military service. That comes into play further along in your career. Mm -hmm. um, but a 70 is a passing score. Okay. So, so far I, I got my, my package together. I came in and took the written test. I passed the written test. I came in and took the PT test. I passed that. Now where do I go from here? Um, well, let me note one thing, too. The okay. PT test and the written test are all done on the same day. Oh, okay. So you're not making multiple trips back, which makes it convenient for so the So if applicant. I'm coming from out of state, I can do both of those tests at one time? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. And we do work with our out-of-state um, applicants as well. In fact, uh, last week I did a test for a gentleman from uh, Pennsylvania, and I did his written test, I did his PT test, interview, polygraph, psychologicals, all on the same day to avoid him. For making multiple trips down wow. here. Wow, awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I got that done. Uh, I'm local. Okay. So I'm, I still live in Chesterfield County. I'm coming out of whatever high school. I, I did my college. I just taken all, all my tests. Now where I go from here? I've been passed everything that you have given me. Now what do I do? Uh, the next step in the process is coming in for your background interview. That's when you bring in all the documents we'll need to verify who you are, such as your transcripts, your DD-214s from the military, uh, marriage license, birth certificate, social security card. Um, we'll sit down, we'll go over that background packet with you uh, page by page, and we will discuss any concerns, interests, and everything possible about your ba past background. You'll have a chance to disclose anything you may have forgotten to tell us about um, for clear transparency and to be honest, and uh, just to make sure you didn't overlook anything that we need to know to make an informed decision about you being a police officer. Um, being honest and having integrity during this portion of the process is critical. Uh, listen, I'm at, at my church, other places where I see kids or see young people. First thing they ask me, man, I, I had marijuana. Man, I had marijuana, you know, when I was in college, my freshman year, I tried it. Now that I'm, I got my life together, I'm graduating from criminal justice major at whatever university, can I still be a police officer? Sure, sure. And um, I'll tell you this, the way we look at our applicants is we look at them uh, we look at their lives, rather, as a video. Good. We don't look at their lives as a snapshot. In other words, if we did that, we would look at that, that drug use, let's yep. say, mm -hmm. and we may exclude them because of that. But prior to that and after that, they may have done some very good things after that. Um, so we look at them holistically, their whole life as a video, and put it all together. Wow. So some of our standards are not just Chesterfield County Police. They are also state law standards that would exclude a person, like lying, certain felonies, domestics, um, things that would preclude them from being an officer. So it's not just our internal standards, there are also external standards by state law. We need to share to the public. Because, again, we, we think police officers are not human. You know, they, they, they are above doing something when they were young. Right. And, and we get applicants that, that will call us and say, man, you know, I got this problem going on, or I did this. Can I be a police police officer? And I tell them all the time, listen, we, we are, you have the same right to be a police officer. And if you're honest and, and, and things that we look at, you can be an exception to things that are going on in your career or that you have done when you were a young person. I like that. I no. like that. Do you like, all ever see applicants that would have been potential officers that excluded themselves because they tried to deceive you? for something that oh, they man. would have been hired for, mm -hmm. but they weren't honest and forthcoming. Yes, absolutely. That is, that's frustrating, actually, because we see a lot of good candidates come mm -hmm. in, and we tell them at testing, be honest with us. We don't really care what you did mm -hmm. as long as you tell us about it. Um, then they'll get in, and we'll go through an interview, and then we'll start their background, and we'll discover something that they omitted or something that they intentionally lied about, mm -hmm. and we simply can't have right. that. And right. the unfortunate thing is, is that candidate would have been probably been hired right. had they not lied. Exactly. Well, how far do you go back? Middle Good school question. grades, high Good school question. grades? Well, we <laughs> we go back to the very beginning, honestly. Okay. And obviously, we put more emphasis on their backgrounds as they get older. Oh, right. You know, um, but we we do go all the way back. We want to know where you were born, when you were born, who your parents are, who your family is, mm -hmm. your friends, all that. So right. we we go back to the beginning. There are some challenges during the background process for people who have served in the military or have been a child of a parent who served in the military. Uh, as we know, people in the military move around a lot, and it's a part of our process to check with the local jurisdictions where our applicants have lived, um, just to make sure that um, there are no hiccups that will come up during the hiring process 
but that is a part of our process to properly verify all of our applicants. So you're getting to the part where you're going out and actually talking to my neighbors. <laughs> That's the part I always I always think about. Right. Hey, who's going to go talk to my neighbors? You're not going to really. Because you get the address of all the places that you have lived, mm -hmm. and we'll send an investigator out mm -hmm. there, or we'll contact the, the people that they have given us the information on right. and talk to them about what type of person that, 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 that applicant is. Uh, and I, I was always scared of that, to be honest with you, mm -hmm. because um, I, I really didn't know my – I had old, old people as mm -hmm. my neighbors in Virginia Beach, and I was scared they were going to say I hurt somebody's dog or something like that. But – <laughs> it didn't happen, so I, I, I got here. So how do you do that? So you go out to the to the resident, or do you just contact them, depending on the, the location? Well, unfortunately, COVID has changed things a sure. little bit, so we're doing much more by phone and by email mm -hmm. out of respect for everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, but typically, we like to, if they're within the area, we like to go out and actually knock on doors and talk to neighbors. Oh, cool. um, you don't have to know your neighbors. They don't really have to know you. Right. But they will know things about you that are important to right. us. Um, you know, we, have, we, we make contact with uh, personal character references, too, mm -hmm. and we expect them to know you and know your character. But your neighbors, as long as we can get an address form, right. we can make contact with them. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. now, now, what about your um, um, family? You know, I, and I, everybody knows my, my story. My brother, he used to, he, he was into some illegal stuff. And, um, but again, people will ask that, uh, and I'm honest with that and say, yeah, I'm even in college. I will talk about some of the things that he was doing in college. How do you approach that? We're not going to hold the actions of other people against you. That includes your parents, your siblings. We just want to know about you. All right, so we got, we, we, we I'm, I'm moving forward. Okay, so I, I made it through the background. I have did my interview with you all. Where do I go from there? Well, at that point, you're kind of the limbo because we are actually doing our background <laughs> investigation. Okay. So um, if an applicant doesn't hear from us, that can be a good thing okay. because things are going along smoothly. Um, typically, an, a background takes about eight to ten weeks to complete, and then that depends on how many people are ahead of, ahead of that particular applicant. Um, when we do start making contact with the applicants mm -hmm. that are in the background process, it's because we need clarification. We need to... Uh, maybe clear some things up so we need them to respond back to us as soon as possible so we can keep moving forward okay so okay. but again it takes about eight to ten weeks to do a complete thorough background wow. and once the background is near completion the applicant is also going to participate in a panel interview with members of our command staff okay um, after that they will have to take a physical with our county doctor a complete physical with our county doctor uh, they will also meet with our uh, police psychologist and all of those things are taken into account and factored in to the entire background investigation. Okay. So I, now I've made it through to the psychologist, mm -hmm. and that person is going to talk to me about if I'm ready to be in the occupation that, that I'm applying mm -hmm. for, correct? Um, so where I go from there? Am I going to the chief now, or am I going to another panel? After you meet with the psychologist and have the medical and panel, we finalize the report with all those results. That report then is sent up through our chain of command. Okay. I mean, it goes all the way through the chain of command. A lieutenant, a captain, major, lieutenant colonel, and colonel all have to sign off on it. And obviously, the colonel has the final say. Now, you sign off on as well. Yes, we okay. do. Okay, yes. okay. That we say we, this person can go forward yes. or the person doesn't go forward. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So once they sign off, the chief signs off. Now the applicant or the person is hired. That is, is that, does he get a phone call or she gets a phone call? Typically what we do is we call them and we make um, a job offer over the phone. Okay. Um, and we hope by that point that that person has done some thought, given some thought to what they're doing and that they will accept on the phone. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Part of our hiring process outside of basic police recruits is we also have a pre-certified officer program. There are two aspects to that program, both in-state pre-certified and out-of-state pre-certified. The qualifications for each are different based on the jurisdiction where they're coming from, whether they're in Virginia or out of Virginia, the length of time they serve. Um, the biggest difference is the modified academy for pre-certified applicants are 14 weeks as opposed to the traditional 30 to 32-week academy. And then that includes um, out-of-state pre-certs as well, or laterals as a lot of people like to call it. 
Uh, the difference with the out-of-state laterals is that they must have been with their department for five continuous years. Out-of-state? Out-of-state. Okay. One department, five continuous years. Okay. And again, that's not our standard. That is a standard that was set forth by um, the Virginia Department of Criminal Justice Services. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. And what about in-state? Is just a, a transfer over because of the same... Basically, it is. Uh, we prefer that they have at least one year of okay. experience okay. after completion of their field training. Cool. All right. Moving no. on. So you know we can talk about this for a few more hours or oh. minutes. No. Uh, but I want to. I want to like to have another a day to go from once I am accepted that um, you have given me the package. I have been offered the job. Where do I go from here? And I want to talk about the next part two. I will call it a part two. Um, of talking about getting going to the academy and I, if you all will walk me through some of the academy stuff and we may get a person from the academy to come mm-hmm. here and, and talk a little bit about that also mm-hmm. um, because again I, I think we we can use this in our recruiting uh, we can take it to the universities and, and let them see walk you through it not only what you see on that we go over the package with you but now you can hear it from the detective, the investigators that actually do your background and what they look for. So um, with that. If you want to be a police officer, that's great. But you have to have the heart yes. and the desire and the character to be a police officer. And what we are truly looking for is honesty and integrity and someone who wants to do this job. Good. Right. That's Good. what I'm looking for. Cool. I know one of the things I'd like to point out to our listeners is that if people have a question about the background process before mm. they get into it so they don't feel like they're wasting the department's time or their personal time, is it acceptable for them to call the office to ask questions? I know we won't disclose our automatic disqualifiers, but is it okay if they call in to speak with one of you all or someone in our personnel HR Yeah, abs- absolutely it is. Um, I field a lot of phone calls throughout the week. Uh, for some reason, I seem to be the, the catch-all <laughs> for the phone right? calls. But that's fine. <laughs> that, that's absolutely fine. I, I like talking to people. Yes. I like trying to prep them. I like giving them correct information. Uh, but they're absolutely more than welcome to give us a call in our office. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. And, and we'll, we'll do this more because, again, when you, when you, this is like a, a – I call it – like we said, we call it the box. And talking about things that we – that's going to be related to the community – we're recruiting. We we got we, we still got positions available. We're always recruiting. Absolutely. So getting you all to come in and, and give us your, the insight of what's going on in recruiting and in the um, in the division of personnel is, is is awesome for LA and I. We want to thank you guys for coming up. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, for you guys. Thank Appreciate you guys. it. Listeners, follow up again. We'll be having some more podcasts coming out. In yes, the yeah. Near yeah. future about the Chester County Police Department. We out. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Chesterfield County Police Department podcast. This episode was written by Daryl Skinner, sound engineer Chris Rizzuti. We are the Chesterfield County Police Department representing Chesterfield County, Virginia. Check us out online at chesterfieldpd.com.